Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about some updates to the Lightning 2 targeting pod for the F-18C Hornet in DCS World. I covered many of the systems in a previous tutorial for the older targeting pod, so for this video, I won't explain every one of the pod systems. Instead, I'm going to focus on explaining the changes to the pod and how to use them. We also have a new air-to-air -air mode for the pod, enabling us to use it in conjunction with the attack radar to spot and track airborne targets. However, to keep this video short, I'll create another video featuring the air-to-air -air capabilities in the near future. Alright, so let's get started. In the cockpit here, we can see that our pod is armed, warmed up, and ready to go. The framework is still the same as before. You still have the degrees in azimuth and elevation that the camera is looking relative to your aircraft. We also still have wide and narrow field of view button, the VVSL or velocity vector slave mode. We have the UFC button here to change the laser designation and search codes and your aircraft's barometric altitude and a declutter button here to clean up the display. We also still have airspeed and Mach number, white and black hot for the FLIR camera, CCD FLIR toggle button, and the zoom function. Alright, so some of the new options we have are freeze, which allows us to freeze the video feed, useful for taking pictures and gathering intel, RTCL, which allows us to toggle on and off the camera reticle. This turns off by default when you're in velocity vector slave. Gray, which shows us a grayscale to help calibrate your display. ALG, which is the auto level gain option that attempts to give you the best contrasting image for your display. Autofocus is still in development. And zoom, which can now be pressed to toggle between level and gain options for your FLIR camera. Notice that we can only access manual level and gain controls when ALG is turned off. We also have this new attitude indicator that displays our aircraft's bank and pitch angle as well as our angle of attack. As we pitch up or down, this solid line will increase or decrease, marked in 30 degree increments. Bank left or right and you'll notice the solid portion will slide to the left or right of the scale. Angle of attack is indicated by a small and large carrot over the center appearing at 7 and 12 degrees respectively. There's also a change to the behavior of the pod in snowplow, area track, and point track. Snowplow mode now shows default position of 8 degrees down instead of adding your aircraft's angle of attack like it did in the previous version. You can slew the pod in snowplow mode and it will stay in snowplow instead of reverting to an area track. Switching to area track and point track works the same way as the old version by pressing sensor control switch or SES in the direction of your active screen, in this case to the right. By pressing SCS right, we can cycle into area track, then point track, then back to normal operation or OPR. A big change to area track and point track is the addition of an offset cursor. You can no longer slew the camera head in area or point track. Instead, by pressing TDC to press, you will enable an offset cursor on your screen which can be moved around with the TDC controls. You can move the cursor over your target and designate that point as your new target by pressing TDC to press again. Keep in mind there's no indication on your screen that you've designated a target. However, you can reference the new target diamond on your HUD and the weapon station for the updated coordinates. Pressing SCS right again will cycle our pod back into normal operation mode, however it will not automatically put it back into snowplow. For some reason, and I suspect it's a bug, you can't slew the pod again unless you designate a target or until you cycle VVSL on and off. By cycling velocity vector slave, you'll put the pod back into default snowplow mode. As a small time saving tip, you can quickly double tap your undesignate button to toggle VVSL mode. Another small feature in area or point track mode is if you designate a target with the offset cursor, then cycle the pod back into operational mode, the pod will snap its aim to the location designated by your offset cursor. Another change to the pod is the addition of a space stabilized continuous target designation in operation mode. 
by pressing TDC to press in operational mode you'll see the crosshairs turn into a diamond indicating that you're constantly updating target coordinates to your weapon station. You can slew the target area around and notice the coordinates in our weapon station updating as we do that. The target diamond on your HUD is dashed to indicate it's a slewable target. To get out of this mode just press the undesignate button and you might have to cycle the velocity vector slave mode on and off to get back into snowplow. Some great news with the new updates on the pod is that it's now even faster to program your weapon stations with individual coordinates in target of opportunity mode than it was with the old version. Unfortunately, it's a little bit more difficult to track a moving target in point track mode, but I'll make a video later to demonstrate how to employ GPS guided weapons in target of opportunity mode using the pod. Laser spot track or LST works the same way as before. We ensure the laser search code and laser designator used by the JTAC are on the same frequency. Then we slew the pod to the general area that the target is in. Enable the LST option and you'll now notice we don't get an indication of the laser seeker or the video feed until the seeker has found a valid laser reflection. Once it finds the laser, the pod will slew to the target and resume video feed. The way you mark a target with your pod's laser designator has also slightly changed. If you drop your laser guided bomb in auto mode, the pod will now automatically turn on your laser when required after you've released your ordnance, giving your laser guided ordnance terminal guidance. You'll see a countdown timer on your HUD for laser telling you when the pod will turn on the laser. After the laser fires, a time until impact or TTI timer will be displayed. Once the bomb has reached its target, your laser will automatically power off into safe mode. Remember the pod will only auto laze if the laser is powered on and if you drop the bomb in auto mode. It will not auto laze in CCIP. However, when you select a CCIP delivery mode, then your pod will slave to the end of the bomb fall line, indicating the position of your CCIP target. You can still fire your laser manually by ensuring trig is selected and holding your trigger. You'll notice LTDR flashes on the screen and the HUD indicating that the laser is firing. And that covers all the new features and behaviors of the pod in air to ground mode. I expect we'll be getting a few bug fixes or additional features to the pod in later updates and I'll attempt to feature those changes for you as they come. In the meantime, if you notice anything that I've missed in this video or you need some clarification on anything, give me a shout in the comments down below and I'll be happy to help. Happy flying!